it was okay this afternoon at the house because I was reviewing it. Hmm? <laughs> I just started kind of, and I'm so, I told them all when I, I, uh, I ordered these things and they came and I was trying to put the certificates in and they started the ordering that company. I told them I'd get them some good ones. Y'all just hold them together today, please. What, what would cause it to be that slow? I'm going to need something if that thing doesn't load it. There you go. Okay. That's not quite ready. Know. Everybody ready? You okay? Ready to start. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call to order this first uh, commission meeting of May, May the 10th, uh, beginning at 4. And uh, Commissioner Friend is going to lead us in the invocation, if you would please stand. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you and we praise you, God, for this day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we just thank you for a wonderful city that we can come together and we can participate in the freedoms that we, that we cherish, God. We just thank you for the men and women, Father, that have sacrificed and continue to sacrifice to, to help us preserve those freedoms, Lord. We just thank you for the residents of this city, God, and that have entrusted us with doing the, the city's business, Lord. And I just pray that you'll give us wisdom, guidance, and direction as we go about the city's business. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now we have a very special treat. We have um, singers from Lynn Haven Elementary's Freedom Singers this afternoon. And they are going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag as well as sing the National Anthem for us. They're under the direction of Dr. Janine Hagen. Ladies, do you want to sing first? That's You would indulge me just for a moment. I wanted to recognize each of them individually. If girls, if you'll just stay there for just a moment. Um, this certificate for outstanding achievement in patriotism and leading your students to raise over $1,000 for the preservation of the American bald eagle. 
the national bird. As the director of the Freedom Singers of Lynn Haven Elementary, joining with your neighboring school, Southport Elementary, you've honored your school, your city, and your country by continuing the wings across the bridge tradition, and we're honored to have you as a teacher at Lynn Haven Elementary School. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. And this is for um, Aniston Josker, Mackenzie Creamer, Jayla Messer, Jasa Messer, excuse me, I think we recognize your name, <laughs> Hannah Fleming, Ava Goodwin, and Angel Lipford. Okay, and I'll just pass this to you. Could you guys give them one more round of applause? Aren't they amazing? Thank you. Thank you again, ladies. You're welcome to stay for this exciting meeting if you'd like, or if you would like to leave, you don't have to <laughs> feel badly about it at all. Um, I would like to move on now to item number three of the mayor's report. And um, I did want to just mention again um, the wonderful job that Lynn Haven Elementary in Southport did at their uh, Wings Across the Bridge project. I, th I believe it was the 15th year the two schools have been doing that. And uh, the two schools uh, marched across the bridge together and did a patriotic ceremony. It was really, really beautiful. Um, also, um, I just there were so many things happening with our Lynn Haven schools. And so for part of the mayor's report, I just wanted to, um, to talk about some of the things that have happened um, just in the past um, few weeks and months. And I wanted to start with um, the leader of our Lynn Haven High School, Mosley High School, um, Sandra Harrison. Ms. Sandra Harrison, if you come forward. <laughs> and I wanted to tell you about her. Um, she was just honored as Bay District Schools um, Principal of the Year. And so that speaks a lot about our school. Um, and um, this award was for outstanding leadership of her school. And if I could mention, it was also in this morning's paper that they were in the top 5% of the United States high schools. That's out of almost 50,000 high schools. They were number 1,117. Pretty, pretty nice honor for Lynn Haven. <laughs> um, one of the unique things about Sandy, besides the fact she's also my friend, is she graduated from Mosley High School in 1976, and she's been the principal there for the past eight years. She has um, eight years of teaching experience and 25 years in school district and state of Florida um, educational administration. Um, she considers herself a student's principal, which the students would tell you. And while student academic achievement is her top priority, she's also a huge proponent of student involvement in athletics, fine and performing arts, Marine Corps Junior ROTC, and other extracurricular activities. Um, she's built many relationships with students and families, and she's got a dedicated faculty and staff, and Mosley maintains a climate that all of us in Lynn Haven can be very proud of. So just another round of applause for you. Thank you. And her husband, uh, Gary, is also with her here today. Gary, thanks for coming as well. And I just have two more. Um, and uh, this award, um, Kyle Hudson, if you would come forward. Thank you. Kyle is the student government president at Mosley High School. And um, I had, um, if I could just read this to you, for your outstanding achievement in patriotism as the student government president of Mosley High School, he led his fellow classmates in the middle of prom, graduation, and all those other activities to raise over $20,000 for honor flight, making it possible for Vietnam, Korean, and World War II veterans to be flown to visit the Washington, D.C. memorials. Congratulations. And I have one final one. I don't, I don't see um, Mimi. Is Mimi here? Oh, there you are, right there, right in front of me. Come on up. Mimi's real name is Mary Christine Mallory, but she's known by her friends as Mimi. And um, this young lady also made the news. Thank you very much. She's a senior at Mosley High School. And um, Mimi, Mary Christine Mallory, for outstanding academic achievement, she made history here in Bay County. I mean, real history. Um, academic achievement as a Mosley High School senior with $1,052,400 in scholarship awards. <laughs> um, she has a 4.625 GPA and 450 hours of community service here in Lynn Haven. So a big round of applause for you. <laughs> Congratulations. We're so proud of you. Thank you.
And I believe her parents are with her today as well. Um, Judge and Mrs. Mallory, I believe, are with us. Thank you for being here for her special honor. And um, I think that's everybody that I... Oh, and one other thing, um, one other guest we had here in Lynn Haven this week was the um, uh, general who represented the entire uh, Air Force for the United States was at the... Uh, general Welsh was at the um, MAC uh, committee this week, and that was quite an opportunity to get to say hello to such a, a, a note... Uh, I won't say notorious, a notable uh, general, <laughs> and uh, I believe we have several Air Force um, veterans here. So that's all I have for my... Um, Mayor's report, other than a proclamation, which I would like to read, and, and this one's very important because now that we're all starting on our uh, boating for the summer, uh, this is a proclamation for safe boating, and I believe we have a representative from the Coast Guard here to accept the, um, the award today, or the proclamation. Thank you. So whereas we look forward to the warm weather months and our nation's abundant outdoors and waterways for relaxation and recreation. America's lakes, rivers, and oceans are enjoyable but can sometimes pose dangers to watergoers. National Safe Boating Week gives us the opportunity to highlight the importance of safety precautions and sensible behavior when spending time on the water. And whereas precautions include wearing life jackets, responsible boaters are smart and recognize that life jackets will not work if they're not worn. Safe boating is also sober boating since alcohol use is a leading factor in fatal boating accidents. And whereas we all applaud the all-volunteer U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary and local Flotilla 19, who help us on many occasions as well, for being essential safe boating partners with the Safe Boating Council. And the city dedicates this week of National Safe Boating Week in special recognition of Flotilla 19 for their many hours of volunteer work on behalf of the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary. And now, therefore, I, Margo Deal Anderson, Mayor of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, do hereby support the goals of the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary and Local Flotilla 19 and proclaim the week of May 21st through 27th, 2016 as National Safe Boating Week. Um, the effort of your year-round effort to urge everyone to use safe boating practices at the start of this. In witness whereof I have set my hand and caused the official seal of the City of Lynn Haven to be affixed this 19th day, excuse me, this 10th day of May 2016. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. Thank you for all you do. One final announcement. Um, yesterday, excuse me, the day before yesterday was a very special day in all of our lives. It was Mother's Day, and um, I'd like to recognize all the mothers here by asking them to stand, especially my own mother, who I always love to see at the commission meeting. So if everybody would, it's a mom, please stand. Let us honor you. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm finished with the mayor's report. Commissioner Shad? Uh, I, too, attended the Military Affairs Committee uh, social and meeting of the general. Those are always special occasions to me. I come from a military family. And to see the young men and women that are in the service today, they are exceptional people. <coughs> uh, I compare that, my dad was a career man in the Navy, and I compare that with when he was younger in the service, and say that the people we have serving us today are much more highly educated. They're much, physically, they're much bigger and better people, uh, and they continue to grow up, and they love what they do, and they love this country. And thank God we've got people like that that are willing to join the military and serve, and I'm so grateful to them. Uh, on a personal note, uh, I attended my granddaughter's graduation from Auburn Sunday. <laughs> and of course, I'm thankful to the Lord let me live long enough to see that. The interesting thing was they had four graduating classes over two days. They awarded 3,738 degrees. When I attended Auburn, the entire student population was just a little over 6,000. <laughs> now it's over 30,000. So that was quite an occasion for me to, to do that. Uh, unfortunately, that is such a long, drawn-out process. This poor old body was up for 20 hours straight <laughs> getting up there in attendance to all of that. But I came back tired and happy. Thank you. Thank you, and congratulations to your granddaughter, um, Commissioner Ashbrook. I have no report. 
Thank you. Um, Commissioner Barnes? Yes, last week, uh, schools across America celebrated National Teacher Appreciation Week. And uh, since we did not meet last week, um, I just want to say to my fellow teachers and educator friends and things of that nature um, to thank you for the job that you do in educating our youth today. It's, we certainly don't do it because of the money. We do it because we love kids and we, we want to see our children excel in whatever it is that they decide that they're going to do. But uh, my, hat's, my hat is off to all the teachers in Bay County and the surrounding area for doing such a great job with our students. Thank you. Commissioner Friend? Thank you, Mayor. Yep, um, going to senior recognition tomorrow. I always look forward to that and hearing all those amazing numbers come in for the scholarships. Congratulations. Judge, I don't know if you remember, but we were on a plane together. I think both of our daughters were uh, freshmen. Goes very fast. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so congratulations and look forward to that tomorrow. We also have some grand openings coming to Linhaven uh, this week as well. So Linhaven continues to grow. So that's all I have. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. It's a great time. Um, the city manager's report is next. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, if Ms. Mrs. Ramona Bibbs could step forward. Thank you. For the, those of you that don't know Mrs. Bibbs, she is the supervisor of animal control uh, and runs our shelter out at the sports park and has been with the city for almost 20 years, I believe, 1997. And she does an incredible job out there. It's uh, sometimes a thankless job if you've got a, an animal that's just not very controllable and it's a hazard to our citizens, but she does an excellent job. She does an excellent job rehoming a lot of animals, all the cats and dogs that wind up out there. Uh, she, you won't find anyone with a, a bigger heart and more passion for these animals. So I, we appreciate your service and I've got the employee of the month here in recognition of your outstanding performance, productivity, and dedicated service. And you know, a lot of people, don't, and this is kind of trivial, but it's not just dogs and cats out there. There's reptiles, there's birds, there's goats. Um, her, her job is different on a daily basis. And um, on weekends, <laughs> nights, they get called out, and, and she and her staff just do an excellent job, and we appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. The city attorney's report? Uh, no report, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, item number seven, um, as we move along um, to the pu a public hearing, and I'll be stating that time, which is 416. Madam, Madam Mayor? Yes. Sorry. Uh, may I interrupt? Of long course you may. We lost uh, a, a very valuable citizen here in the last couple of weeks, Doc Smith. Yes. And a lot of people don't know him, but a lot of people that do know him no, he was a very quiet person, all right? and he was a mentor to a lot of people. He raised a family of exceptional sons, and I, I would like to see the city dedicate a plaque to Doc and hang it on the wall here in the chambers in recognition of the service that he gave to this community and the contributions that he made. Thank you. Um, is, is there, a, would you want to put that in the form of a motion? Yes, I will. Second. There's been a motion and a second that a plaque be um, placed in the, the chambers, Mr. Commissioner yes. here in the chambers honoring Julius Doc Smith. Um, and there's been a motion and a second. Is there any um, discussion from the board or questions? Um, any question or discussion from the, the audience? Okay, Mr. Schubert, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Shad? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Ashbrook? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And that uh, will we'll pass and we'll get <coughs> that done soon. And I, I think that was a wonderful uh, suggestion, Commissioner Shad. Um, now we'll begin um, our public hearing, and it is now 418. Um, we'll be um, talking about LSA 16-1, the Comprehensive Plan Text Amendment, the Trust for Public Land, and I believe Ms. Richard has some information for us on this. I do. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. This is a large-scale future land use map amendment request from traditional neighborhood development, or TND, to public open space. The um, land in question is known as the Ninhaven Bayou Park and Preserve. It's located on Highway 2321 south of McKithens Bayou. The applicant is the Trust for Public Land, 
And we have representation today here from Mr. Doug Hathaway, who is with the Trust for Public Land, so he can answer any in-depth questions that you have. The size of the parcel is almost 98 acres, and the existing use is vacant. This shows where the parcel is located, and it's actually to the northwest of the large TND parcel that you're familiar with, that it was um, all going to be developed as a TND, and it's just to the west there of Deer Point Elementary School. This is the aerial map which shows you, outlined in red, the, um, the land that we're talking about. It's currently vacant. There are some wetlands on there, um, and it's, it's on the water. It's very pretty land. This is what the future land use map looks like currently. Um, that color is all the uh, TND color there that you're seeing, that kind of yellow stripe. If the amendment goes through, then the future land use map will look like this. So that green is recreation open space. Currently, under traditional neighborhood development, um, you can have a, a mix of uses which allows for commercial, different types of residential, um, and various civic buildings, etc. The land use will need to be changed in order for it to be a passive recreation park because we wouldn't want anybody in the future building residential commercial on this land. And this is the land that um, the Trust for Public Land purchased with former with, with BP money. Um, they were given money by BP to find parcels of land which would be appropriate to develop as uh, passive recreation in order to try and, um, because of the issues that occurred with the, with the oil spill. Um, I think you all may be familiar with this, but as I say, Doug Hathaway is here so that he can answer more specific questions which perhaps the audience would be interested in hearing. Um, if you all, there's a, there's a resolution after this public hearing, later on on the agenda, there's a resolution for you to vote on transmitting this to the state um, because it's a slightly different process with it being a large-scale plan amendment. So what happens is you, you decide whether you're going to transmit it to the state and then the state agencies review it and let us know whether we can proceed with adopting the ordinances to make this happen. Thank you. Are there questions from the board uh, for Ms. Richard or for um, Mr. Hathaway? There appear to be none. Um, are there any questions from the public regarding this issue? Uh, yes, Mr. Walker. Uh, Rich Walker, 1106 Michigan Avenue. As I've been following this and reading about it, just here in the portion that was on the um, website, um, I noticed that this is for, it deals with actually two things. Um, this separate part deals with the purchase, if I am correct, deals with the purchase of the property, and it lists the purchase property as being $3,542,797. Um, but it also says in that agreement that this is a 10-year program, and the 10-year program was a $14.7 million program, and 14 of the 14, four of that was the purchase, which seems that three is there, and 10 million was for the program to maintain it. My question here is, I didn't see any budget, I've never seen any budget given to them about this, which is that what they required. However, the budget will expire in 10 years, and that's $10 million over 10 years, period. My question to here is, who is responsible for this whole program after the 10 years are up? Now, I realize some of us won't be here, but that is not the point. It's what we leave our descendants. Um, excluding the loss of tax revenue from 97, million, uh, 97 acres, which is quite extensive on prime waterfront property, that has never been thought of, is what happens after the end of 10 years? Who is responsible for the maintenance, the upkeep, the administration? 
I agree that the $10 million will cover that, the 10-year program, at a million dollars a year, maybe. Well, my question is this to the city, is have we given any thought as to what happens after 10 years? Directing that to the, to the board, to me? I have to address, as per regulation, to the mayor of this town. And, and I, I believe that, that at a previous meeting I had, had given my thoughts on this. Um, and, you know, anyone else is welcome to give theirs on the board as well, as, including the city manager. Um, but this is um, definitely going after your question is after 10 years, who will be responsible for the maintaining and, and the expenses of this beautiful park? And it will be Lynn Haven. Um, it will be Lynn Haven. Um, as, as mayor and, and, and listening to the voice of the people, um, this is a gift um, that it is a gift. And it's a gift that will mitigate a lot of, of the terrible things that happened to Florida as a result of the of the oil spill, and it's going to be it's going to be such a benefit. Um, they're putting a great deal of money into the uh, structures out there. It's going to be a beautiful nature area. Um, it will draw people here. I think it will help our economy. I mean, I see no negatives. That's me speaking, representing what I've heard from the people of Lynn Haven. But if anyone else wants to comment on it, you know. But but to answer your question, after 10 years, we will definitely be responsible for the upkeep and maintenance. But um, 10 years ago, Lynn Haven looked different than it does now. And it will, you know, we have the new fuel depot property with that tax money coming in. We're going to have a lot of different changes in the city. And I, I see a very bright future, a very optimistic educational opportunity out there for our schools. I don't see any negatives to this. I think we'll be well able to take care of it. Mayor, could I, could I sure. add to that too and just echo some of your sentiments? Uh, just to clarify some of the, the numbers you're talking about, Mr. Walker, I, we've described it previously as kind of a three-phase project. There's the purchase of it, which took place, I believe, it closed last month. Then there's the most uh, expensive part of this project. The second phase is developing the improvements. This is raw virgin land. They're going to put all these passive recreational improvements on it, which is the bulk of the total of $17 million. And then the agreement you're speaking about, I refer to as the third phase, which is approximately $3.5 million over a 10-year span. Now, if the city is able to extend that longer than 10 years, that $3.5 million is still there. I mean, if we can stretch that to 12 or 15 years, more power to us. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to echo what the mayor said, it, it's a win-win win proposition for the cities, for the citizens, and, and, and for the, the program. Uh, we are responsible for it when that $3.5 million is done. And when you talk about maybe a feasibility and, or a... a an analysis of the revenue lost due to pulling 98 acres off the tax roll per se. One, there, there's a couple issues there. One, as a TND, you have to dedicate space to recreation a, a, as well. So, I mean, some of this would have been not on technically on the tax rolls in, in opening up a ca utility accounts with us, et cetera, paying ad valorem taxes. The other is, look at the absorption rate in this. 940 acres, now approximately 100 acres less because now they're going to be selling um, dirt with a regional park next to it. It's not a Lynn Haven Park, it's not a Bay County Park. Folks are going to be coming in from, from other areas. So I, th I think you have to take a look at what it does to the entire economy of Lynn Haven and not just your lost tax base, but you also offset the lost tax base for what it's doing for those surrounding properties. But the main thing I want to do is clarify that three-prong, three-phase of this park, and it's not a $10 million grant. It's approximately $3.5 million over 10 years or more. I understand, and I, that's the answer to my question. I do not want to stand here and deliberate 10 years of TND and that 950 acres. Um, however, uh, we would be here into uh, history, what started into this building. In this building, we sat here and discussed that 950 acres. That's mo I don't want to get into that. I just I have my answer. And Thank I, you. I hope to be here in 10 years when this comes about and uh, we don't get hit with a very expensive I hope I hope we're both here. <laughs> That'll be awesome. Okay. Anyone else have a comment on the, on the park or the preserve? Okay. Um, at this time, it's 428 and the public hearing is closed. 
We'll move on to the consent agenda, item number eight, um, the minutes for April 26th, the regular meeting, and number nine is the approval of operation and maintenance agreement for the Lynn Haven Bayou Preserve. Um, is there a motion that we accept the items eight and nine? Also move. Second. Thank you. There's been a motion and a second. Are there any questions or discussion from the board on either of these items? Is there any uh, discussion or, oh, excuse me, Commissioner Shad? No, no, no. Okay. Is there any discussion or questions from the public on these two items? There appears to be none. Uh, Mr. Schubert, would you please call the roll for the Commi consent agenda? Commissioner Shad? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Ashbrook? Mary Anderson? Yes. Items 8 and 9 are uh, approved. Moving on to new business, item number 10 will be a presentation by Richard McKinney of Car Riggs and Ingram regarding the fiscal year 2014-2015 financial statements. Uh, Mr. McKinney, welcome. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners, City Manager. Uh, my name is Richard McKinney. I'm the uh, auditor in charge of the local um, office of Car Riggs and Ingram's audit department. Um, we have audited the financial statements of Lynn Haven for the year ended September 30th, 2015. Um, a little bit about um, Car Riggs and Ingram and our independence and our requirements. Um, we are an independent CPA firm. We are required to be independent of the city in order to audit the city. Um, we, um, that means we can't have any other financial relationships or any other relationships with anybody related to the city. We're required to be independent. We have um, another CPA firm that audits us every three years. They come in and they sample our audits and they make sure we're complying with the standards, we're maintaining our independence, and the financial statements that we're, um, that we're auditing are in accordance with the rules and requirements of, um, of the standards. Um, we also have a, an internal quality control department which does the same thing internally every year. Every year, each audit, each audit partner is, um, is looked at. They pull a sample of their audit work to make sure that it's in accordance with the standards. They review all, all their work they've done and make sure that they're not doing anything in violation of the standards or um, taking any shortcuts. So um, that's a little bit about our independence and what we do. Um, the financial statements that we audited, um, the Probably the easiest way to review it for you guys is in the MDNA, the Management Discussion and Analysis, which is page four through nine. Um, there's a summary in there that shows a, a, a 30,000 foot um, overview of the last year's compared to this year's. So, um, and that starts on page seven. It shows the changes in the changes in that position, which is um, essentially, I'm sorry, page six which is the, the net position, which is essentially the balance sheet of the, of the city. And it shows 2015 compared to 2014, the governmental activities, which is the general fund, and the business um, activities, which is utility funds, and then the whole thing in total. And um, this shows that your, your total assets for, um, for 2015, in 2014, was 65484000 you ended the year with total assets um, at September 30, 2015, of 70,693. So you increased about five, about um, five million dollars in total assets. Your total debt was 19 million 777 in 2014, and it went up 24 million 707 to 24 million 707 at September 30, 2015, and that's a, also about a five million dollar increase. So basically, you purchased assets for debt for about the same amount. Um, and then on the next page, page seven, shows your results of operations for the year. And um, it shows last year the total revenues for the, for the city were 19851 the total, uh, the total revenues for the current year were 20697 So you're up about a little less than $2 million in increase in revenues from 14 to 15. Your expenditures were 18,337 last year. They were 18,457 this year. So that's um, that's less than a 1% increase. So what that means is you're maintaining your expenses, you're monitoring your budget, but your revenues are going up slightly. Uh, and that's important because um, three years ago, um, I had a discussion with y'all that you were spending you're spending a little bit more than you were bringing in, and you were using up your reserves. 
And so the trend was kind of your cash was going down, your fund balance was going down. Um, and I, I let everybody know that if that continues, it could end up being a problem like the city had back in the mid-90s. Well, I'm happy to report that since then, things have turned around. In the last three years, you've actually started adding back to your reserves. Your revenues have gone up slightly. You've maintained your um, expenses. You've controlled your expenses, and they haven't gone up as much as your revenues. So you're, you're putting back money into your reserves. Your cash is going up slightly. So you're, it, it's a positive trend, and the um, financial health of the city is strong. And that means, you're, that means you, you can take care of problems if something comes up. You've got the money to take care of it. You're not going to have to raise your rate significantly, raise your ad valorem significantly. If you just keep those going at, a, at an even keel to keep up with the expenses, then uh, everybody's happy. And that, that's, that's about where we are right now. Um, as far as findings, um, there, we, have, we had no findings again. Um, we look at your internal controls. We look at your compliance. Uh, make, make sure that the city is complying with all the, uh, what we look at, we don't look at all compliance, we just look at compliance related to financial statements. Um, and we, um, we didn't find any problems, we didn't find any errors, um, and that's, that says a lot about the internal controls of the city and the staff that you've got working for you, and um, they're doing a good job, and it's keeping, it's keeping the findings to, to zero. So Richard, how long ha has the city been solid financially? Since Back in, in the early 90s, um, you had a pretty aggressive mayor and city manager that had a big growth vision. And um, so they were, they were spending, you had, at that time, you had significant reserves. I mean, you were just financially very stable. But over a several year period, they were, they were trying to grow, they were buying land, they were buying infrastructure, and they, were, they, and they, bought the, they put the AWT plant in service to keep you guys independent of, of everybody else in the joint venture. And, uh, but they spent a lot of money. And what ended up happening was you actually went past zero and you ran into a deficit. And you had, you had more liabilities than you had assets at that point. And so I think everybody realized that and they got, they got voted out. So there was a new administration. This was in the mid-90s. And um, the new administration came in um, with, with John Lynch and Mayor Kelly and they started monitoring the budget. They started taking my advice as to, you know, what you need to put aside and, you know, where you can spend and where you can't. And they started, they started the uphill trend. And that went on for several years. Slowly, it wasn't an overnight thing, but slowly it, it pulled out. And then with the, um, with the economic problems in 2005, you know, there started to be a little bit of a downturn. I didn't know. Um, but that's, <coughs> that's turned right. That ne never got near as bad as it was in the mid-'90s. But um, so it turned around, and now you're back. Now you're back on the path to um, to prosperity and, and, and solid financial position. Any other questions? Uh, Richard. Yes, sir. One of the bigger unfunded liabilities that quite a few cities have is the pension. In other words, they have been underfunding pension benefits. Mm -hmm. And you know that's no secret. It's no surprise because it surfaces periodically in the newspapers nationwide of a city going bankrupt because they can't meet their pension requirements. I guess I'm proud of our city because we took the position years ago that we fund our pension benefits. Right. And as far as I know, we are up to date on it. And we should never have a problem unless we stop doing that. But we're financially sound in that when our people retire, uh, you know, their benefits are going to be there to be paid out. And I know, and I'm not asking for names, but I, I know there are some communities within our own uh, county <laughs> that are struggling with that. And, and I think that that's part of the due diligence that this commission started years ago in doing in making sure that when our people retire, the pension benefits will be there and that we have no unfunded liabilities. Mr. Shedd, the, um, the GASB, the Governmental Accounting Standard Board, who sets policy for governmental accounting, right. um, decided a couple years ago that um, you were going to record your pension liability. What happens is it's always been a pay-as-you-go. It's always been 
um, the liability is what, what you determined that you owed right now. Well, what they decided with GASB 67 that affected you guys for 93015 because you've got your own pension plans. And the reason it's in the news now is because GASB 67 affected you because you have your own pension plans. GASB 68 came in with everybody else that didn't have their own pension plans. If they were a member of FRS, then they, GASB 68 applied to them. But GASB 67 applied to you guys, so you guys were on the, on the leading edge because you have your own pension funds. Um, the good news is you did fund, you have been funding your own pension plans. So they were fully funded. But what happened with GASB 67 is now, instead of just booking the liability that you owe today, you have to calculate what, you have to get an actuarial report. And we have to audit that and put in the financial statements the estimate of what your pension is going to cost you to the end of time based on your current situation. So all your employees that have earned, earned a pension up through today, they've got to calculate that and see how much they've earned and book that today, even though it's not going to be paid out until way in the future. So you actually have a liability on your books that you have not had in the past of net pension liability of $1.869 million in the general fund and $1.369 million in the, in, the enterprise, in the utility funds. So that's $3.2 3, 3 million of liability that you didn't have last year, that you hadn't recognized in the past. Well, for a lot of cities and counties and school districts, it's a huge number, and it's taken their unrestricted net fund balance, their, their reserve, and it's taken it way below zero. And, um, and it's, a, it's a real concern for a lot of, a lot of cities and counties. Um, you guys went down to 800,000 in your um, unrestricted net assets, that's your available net assets, 800,000 in the governmental activities, and you've still got 8 million in the utility funds. So even though it, it hurt you, I mean, it took you down quite a bit, you're still, you're still in the positive, and it's not, a, it's not a overwhelming concern for the city. So, but that is, it's a new standard, and you'll hear a lot about it if you're paying attention to, um, to what it's doing to the state, the uh, counties and cities throughout the state of Florida. And it's actually, GASB is a, is a national thing, so this is, this is throughout the nation. This is not just Florida. But that's, it's, a, it's very concerning to a lot of people, and you guys are very fortunate that you funded, that you've, you funded your pensions, um, and you've, you've got enough fund balance that you can take that hit and not, um, not put you in the red. Mr. McKinney, is it yes, accurate that our financials are, audit, are audited or reviewed by the Solicitor General of um, the state, or the, do they not do that anymore? The Auditor General, the state of Florida, looks at every one of these. Okay. The Joint Legislative audit, Auditing Committee of the Florida Senate looks, at, looks okay. at every one of these. If they see findings that are not being resolved or they see a financial distress, um, you'll hear from them. Okay. Um, that's, that's not going to happen for you guys, um, but they do, they do look at it. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. McKinney, how long has your firm uh, been the auditor for the city of Lynn Haven? Uh, my firm goes back to a, a varied history. It started out with, with three partners back in the 80s, and then I joined the firm and became a partner, and then we merged with Carr, Riggs, and Ingram. So the part of the, I've been doing it since the early 90s. That's okay. when I joined the firm as a partner, and I've been, doing, I've been auditing the city since then. Okay, since the early 90s? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so the entire firm has been our auditor since that time? Well, there was no Carr, Riggs, and Ingram before 1997. That's when we, before it was Schofield, Scott, and McKinney was the last name that, where I was a partner. And, um, and I had been doing it with that firm, and then we merged in with Carr, Riggs, and Ingram in 97, and, um, that's, which is a large regional firm. We've got, um, we've got 800 employees, 250 partners, um, 40 offices throughout the southeast in Texas and North Carolina. Okay. Um, but yes, we have been, I've been with the firm that's been doing it since the early 90s. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, any other questions from the board? Yeah, one more question. Um, Richard, for as long as you've been doing this, how many years has the city um, had no findings when it comes to this audit? So that's a very good question. Um, in the early 90s, when I first got here, and, when, and I've been through several finance directors, uh, four or five finance directors, and when I first started working with the finance directors um, back then, I don't, Sharon Fale, um, maybe, Sharon Fale. One, maybe one before her, but um, you had several findings. I mean, you had a couple of pages of findings. And we worked through those, and every year we got it down a little more, and um, Twyla Miller, who wasn't the finance director at the time, was still was here, and she was working with the finance director. So I've worked with her 
since, since that time. And um, when she took over as finance director, working with her on a regular basis, uh, we got the internal controls so that you don't have any problems. And um, she knows what the requirements are. And if she has any questions, she calls me in the middle of the year. So we resolve it before the end of the year, before the audit starts. So um, since probably 1995 or so, don't quote me on that, but uh, about since then, you haven't had any findings since then because I work closely with, with Twyla now, who's the finance director now. And um, we resolve any issues before it becomes an issue. And if she has questions, she says, this might, you know, red flags start, you know, bells start going off in her head. She says, there might be an issue. Um, I better talk to Richard or Rebecca, who works with me, and see what, you know, see what I need to do about it. And we resolve the issue right then. So when I come out to audit, but all those things have already been taken care of. So you haven't had any findings in a long time. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the board? Mayor, I'd just, I'd just make a comment. Richard, I'd take the opportunity to say thank you and appreciate the work that you do. And also, Twyla, you guys do an amazing job. I appreciate you being available to us. I know that I've called on you several times, and we've sat with Twyla in the past to, uh, mm -hmm. to get my head around some of these audits as well. So I really just want to take the opportunity to say thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Is there any comment or questions from the public for the audit, uh, Mr. McKinney? Yes. Yes, sir. Come forward. And, and if you will, um, direct your questions to the board, and then Mr. McKinney can answer if the question's for him or if it's for the board. Thank you. Uh, Brad Yunt, 210 Lakeview Terrace. And it's pr probably a simple question, because I'm not used to look, looking at audits of cities. But if this were an audit of a commercial organization, I would expect to hear a statement in the opinion about the ratios of financial figures, and I would expect to hear a statement about the controls and the adequacy of the controls. Thank you. Are there other comments or questions from the public? Okay. Um, so that would conclude the presentation. I, I didn't really ask any questions other than just how long the firm had been here. But, um, and no disrespect to you at all, Mr. McKinney, but I would take um, issue and have disagreement with some of your statements about what happened in the early 90s and the, the spending, um, uh, the conservative spending of John Lynch and that administration. So I think that was a narration, more of a political opinion than it was about the actual budget. And I, take, take, I disagree with what you said. So um, no disrespect to you, just my opinion. That's fine. Um, it was not absolutely not a political statement. I have the most respect for Well, you everything. said they got voted out. Well, they did they get did. voted out. I was, asked, I was asked the question, and I was answering the question. But, but your statement they got voted out was based on your opinion of how they handled finances. They may have been voted out for other reasons. That, that's, that's, that's why I said it was a political statement. Well, I, I don't agree. I think I know why they, got, why they lost the election. And um, I was asked a question about the financial situation in the city, and that's what I was trying to answer. Okay. Well, and, and, and in my short time as mayor, as I looked at the budget, that's one of the reasons that I ran not against your firm or anything like that. But just um, my, my belief in that, the fact that as I looked at all the accounts that were transferred to general fund year after year after year after year, even though there was nothing illegal about that or nothing that was questionable or a finding, as you say, I still think it was irregular. And so that's, that's my opinion as the mayor. But again, I appreciate you coming here today, and I mean no disrespect in my opinion. So is there any other comment or question from the public? Okay. Um, moving on to item number 11, which is resolution 2016-05-647, LSA-16-1, um, Comprehensive Plan Text Amendment, the Trust for Public Land. Um, would you please read the resolution, um, Mr. Schubert? Resolution number 2016-05-647, a resolution of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, authorizing transmittal to appropriate agencies an amendment to the comprehensive plan amending the future land use map from traditional neighborhood development to recreation open space on property located at County Road 2321, south of McKithens Bayou, parcel number 08710 <coughs> 025-000, which is approximately a total of 97.8 acres. Thank you. Um, are there any questions from the board or um, discussion points of this item? Are there any questions or discussion uh, from the public? And there appears to be none. Is there a motion and a second that we accept this resolution? So moved. Second. Thank you. There's been a motion and a second. Um, since there's been no question or discussion, Mr. Schubert, would you please call the roll? 
Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Ashbrook? Yes. Commissioner Shad? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Uh, Madam Mayor? Yes, sir. Do we not need a motion to accept the audit report as presented by Carl Riggs? Uh, my understanding was that it was a presentation, so should we, is there a, a motion? Uh, we may. No. I don't I, think so. I, don't think I think we traditionally have had a motion, uh, but one isn't necessarily required because the city really can't reject the audit. It's an independent audit and it's presented to the city. Um, I mean, you can really do it either way, but there's no requirement either way to okay. accept it or not. It is, it is what it is. The okay. presentation is what it is. <laughs> okay, since we've already moved on, then we'll just move on. Um, so we're on item number 11. We've had a motion and a second. There's no, no discussion or questions. So, uh, Mr. Schubert, if you would please call the roll for item number 11, which is the resolution, the Trust for Public Land. Back. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Ashbrook? Yes. Commissioner Shad? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Moving on to item number 12, resolution 2016-05-648, amending the adopted general fund, community redevelopment agency, and main street budgets, and the approved enterprise fund budgets for fiscal year 2015-2016. Is there a motion for acceptance? I'll so move. Second. Second. Um, there's been a motion and two seconds, I believe. <laughs> um, is there any uh, question or discussion from the board regarding the amended budget? Pardon me? Yes. Oh, for the budget? No. Did you read I'd the like budget? to. A resolution? Hmm. I, I apologize. Um, Mr. Schubert did not read the resolution for the adopted amendment. I didn't ask for it. I'm sorry. Uh, resolution number 2016-05-648, a resolution of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, amending the adopted general fund, community redevelopment agency, and Main Street budgets, and the approved enterprise fund budgets for fiscal years 2015-2016. Thank you. And there has been a motion and a second that we accept. Correct. Mm, I, I would redo the <laughs> no, motion. Yes, okay, if we could redo the motion and the second now that we've reread the ordinance, the resolution rather. You need it again? Yes, sir, okay. please. I'll move approval. I'll second. Thank you very much. Is there any question or discussion about the amended budget? I don't really like to say I was pleasantly surprised that no interdepartmental transfers have been made. Exciting. Oh. We've dealt with those for the last couple of years. You know, in, in, in my review, I saw nothing out of the way or unusual, with the exception that the majority of the adjustments we had to make were more driven by income changes than expense changes. And the income changes <coughs> sometimes are driven by we get more money from the state than we initially anticipated. Sometimes we get a little bit more money from general taxation than we originally estimated. This time we got a pretty hefty uh, sum from the uh, BP spill, which, which went in there. But you know, most, for the most part, the just general housekeeping items is like our personal budget. I may have budgeted to buy a new car this year and something comes up, I can't afford it, so you don't do it. So you're not spending that money but unanticipated something else comes up. So this is just a typical adjustment period that we go through. Thank you. Are there other comments or questions about the budget? Mayor, if I, if I could just add to that. Sure. Um, you know, that was one of my goals when I first came on a couple of years ago, and I'm not going to take credit for it, but last year's budget um, did not have any, any transfer, and this year's will not, or at least we're projected to not have any as well. Uh, this budget also reflects six to eight months of reserve. On average, we typically have anywhere from six to eight months of reserve, and that's not always been there. And, and I just want to comment again, this does not reflect any proceeds from the sale of the property uh, up to 640 north of town. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other comments or questions? Well, I would comment, too, that some of our revenue stream has uh, increased due to growth. Permits, fees, and impact fees have shown a little bit of an increase as far as our revenue through the first half of the fiscal year. Okay. Are there any questions or comments from the public? Yes. Go ahead, Ms. Walker. <coughs> Janet Walker, 1106 Michigan Avenue. At the very back of the budget under the CRA, under operating expenses on page 62, professional services other, a little over $181,000. 
Could I possibly be told what that might be? Mr. Sure, go ahead. That, um, that's the CRA plan update. That's the Sheffield plan, and that's also the moving of the McMullen Library. Is, is that, um, when it says professional services, is that like consultation work? Or yeah, on the CR plan, it would be. On the Sheffield plan, that includes engineering and architectural renderings. It includes the actual plan. And um, the McMullen Library, I don't think, was contemplated at the start of the year. And that's covered under this? Yes. Thanks. Are there other questions about the amended budget from the public? Comments? Okay. There are no other uh, questions or comments. Uh, Mr. Schubert, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Shad? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Ashbrook? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So that resolution has passed. Moving to item number 13. Um, do you have that ordinance 1022? Um, the first reading of Ordinance 1022 concerning impact fees, um, and this will be a first reading only with no further action required, and Mr. Schubert will read that ordinance for us. Ordinance number 1022, an ordinance of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, amending Section 86-91 of the Lynn Haven Code of Ordinances as it relates to notice requirements for impact fees, repealing all ordinances in conflict, and providing for an immediately effective date. Thank you. That's all we need to do on that. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Um, item number 14 will be the last item for the meeting, which would be the public commentary. This is the opportunity for the public to speak on any um, topic or ask questions about any topic. Anyone? Yes, Mr. Walker. Um, please uh, try to stay within the time frames as much as possible. I won't cut anybody off, but just for the respect of everyone. Thank you. Good afternoon, Rich Walker, 1106 Michigan Avenue. Um, this is in reference to what you just read and no further action required. This is public commentary. My public commentary is this. Reading Ordinance 1022, and it appears to be in a housekeeping exercise to change the verbiage in our ordinances that fit with the Florida statutes, okay? Specifically dealing with, it says here, that the impact fees Increase of impact fees uh, is deleted, the word amended impact fees. The city may decrease, suspend, or eliminate any impact fee without notice. That's in lieu of Florida statutes. In discussion with staff, in reference to this subject, I was informed that you never and cannot reduce or eliminate impact fees seems to be a conflict of verbiage here between your ordinance the Florida statutes. I'm not debating the 90 minute, 90 day thing. That's not the debate. Um, that deals specifically with increases. That means that you can't you increase something with, without 90 day notice. But my, my question here is, in discussion with staff dealing with certain projects, I was informed that we've never and cannot decrease, suspend, or eliminate any impact fee. If that's true, then there seems to be a conflict here. And the city attorney will answer that question for you mm -hmm. since it involves statutes. And sure. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Walker, the, um, our ordinance was originally, our impact fee ordinance was originally passed in 2000, early 2000s, I believe. And at that time, the law was that you couldn't reduce the impact fees without 90-day notice or increase without 90-day notice. And that's designed to protect the contractors and the builders so they at least have a, a heads up that the impact fees are changing. Mm -hmm. uh, after the financial crisis in 2008, the legislature wanted to give local governments flexibility to lower the impact fees or suspend them without providing 90-day notice. So builders and contractors and, and homeowners could get immediate relief from impact fees. Uh, so we, the, the city uh, commission determined last meeting that they wanted to lower the impact fees immediately. However, when we, when we looked at the ordinance, they can't do that by our ordinance. Our ordinance is more strict than the state statute. So you're correct in that this is a housekeeping pr pr uh, provision to make, it, make our ordinance in line with the, the, with the state statutes as far as reducing and lowering impact fees. 
I, I think what you're talking about, what, what you're hearing from staff as far as you can't reduce or you're talking about waiving impact fees, I believe. So once those impact fees are set, they can't be waived on an individual basis for any particular construction project or developer. They have to be, they have, they have to pay them. Unlike, say, building fees or some other types of fees that can be waived as a courtesy for, a, say, a not-for-profit or something like that. Florida law right now is we cannot waive the impact fees once they're set by policy, but this is actually setting the policy, and, and the commission has the absolute right to do, eliminate the impact fee if it wants to, but just not on a case-by-case -case basis for the entire so what, city. What, what we're saying here is we can suspend exactly. completely. So when I asked, was the impact fees suspended to, let's say, example, Walmart, I was told no. But it says here that you can. The, so uh, You'd have to do it for all of them. You have to do it for everybody. Yeah. Pardon? You, you, you can't suspend individuals. Uh, you would have to waive or suspend it for everybody. If you, if you suspended an impact fee for a particular developer or property, Essentially, what you're doing is taxing the rest. You, you okay. <laughs> so, if you remember, Mr. Walker, because I know you're here pretty frequently, several years ago, the, the commission decided to waive transportation impact fees because they determined that they were probably a little out of the line and, and wanted to encourage growth here. So they waived it citywide, and that's still in effect right now from what I understand. So there's no, there's, we're not charging for impact fees, even though it's set on the books, but it applies to everybody. The commission can lift that moratorium when it decides to do that. Okay, so just just trying to clear up lawyeries and a few other things here is if you decide to reduce or suspend or get rid of impact fees for the installation of something in this city, you have to do it city-wise. That's and, correct. Can, okay. May I make a comment on that? Okay. Okay. Um, Mayor, may, sure. there, there may be an individual, if they're, impact, if they're not impacting the system, I can tell you in the two years I've been here, we have not had a situation like that. But I can tell you there are other situations, like say the Field Depot property. If they, they're, at, they're an end user as far as stormwater. If they have all of their stormwater go into the bay, they're not impacting our system. So maybe you won't see a stormwater impact fee. If they're impacting our system, they're going to pay an impact fee. There are such, and I'm saying that to say there are certain situations where they may not impact our our system. So I don't want that confused with well, they they got a waiver. Uh, there's also another situation where if there's already a house and say it burns down, well, they had already paid or they were already impacting the system. The only uh, impact fees they would pay would be the difference of say they had a one bathroom house before, uh, before now they have two they'd pay for one additional bathroom impacting the system so I don't want that to be you know confusion down the road but no, I'm, I'm, I'm basically not confused but I, I do see a problem coming up thank you are there other questions or comments on any other issues uh, yes ma'am Good afternoon. I want to invite y'all to Memorial Day Ceremony and Decoration Day on May 31st. We're working in conjunction, Garden Club is, with uh, Leisure Services. We've done this for years. Work together, it will be at 10 a.m. over in Soldier Park. And I guess downtown is having, the regular day is the 30th Monday. But we decided to do ours on the 31st because y'all would be open that day. And y'all are able to help us with chairs and such. And they've always been very good at, at working with us. And then we feed them afterwards. We give them uh, a meal over at the French to say thank you for all that they do for the Garden Club. We appreciate it. And we'll have all sorts of things that day, the flag raising and get uh, music and some really good singers, so it should be a really good thing. I'll try and remind you again later. I think there's one more meeting before this, yeah. So please, everyone, come out to the park that day. It's really, really nice. Any questions? Thank you.
Yes. Could, could everyone hear Mrs. Whitcoff? Um, what she was telling us is um, our Memorial Day service will be at Soldier Park. It'll be the day after Memorial Day, Tuesday, May 31st, beginning at 10 a.m. And Leisure Services is assisting with that. And then also they're um, having refreshments and entertainment, and, and everyone's uh, cordially invited to attend. Thank you to the Garden Club for doing that. Good. Thank you. Anyone else have comments or questions? Okay, at this time, uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all so much for coming.